A first look at leaked Google Gemini screenshots, plus a new developer tool that no one has heard of yet. Welcome back to the AI Breakdown. Today, we are wandering into the realm of speculation, but I think it's worthwhile. An internet denizen and medium user going by Bedros Pambukian about a week and a half ago posted an article called Gemini is coming to Maker Suite and so are Stubbs. Now, I came across this today in the excellent Ben Spites newsletter, and it seems like this may be what's getting this article attention now. I will caveat this piece that it is at least a little bit what's the source I made it up, but one, I do think it seems at least a little bit credible, and two, I'm going to situate it in the larger conversation about the battle for developers that I'm quite confident is important even if the details contained in this article aren't fully accurate. So first off, let's talk about what is actually in this piece. The post is called Gemini is coming to Maker Suite and so are Stubbs. So there are two big pieces of this and we'll take them in turn. Gemini is of course Google's more advanced forthcoming model. Many are expecting it to be the first model to meet or exceed GPT-4. And frankly, if it doesn't, Google is in some serious trouble. Now to understand the context for this specific post, we have to look at another Google tool called Maker Suite. Google introduced it on September 26th on a blog post on the Google for Developers site. The company writes, We're always on the lookout for tools and technologies that bring innovative solutions to our developer community. Maker Suite is a fast, easy way to start building generative AI apps. It provides an efficient UI for prompting some of Google's latest models and easily translates prompts into production-ready code you can integrate into your applications. Today, we've removed the waitlist so anyone in 179 countries and territories can use Maker Suite. Okay, so basically this is exactly what it sounds like. It is a platform for building generative AI apps using Google's AI tools. It's only been widely available for about a month now. Now, one thing that is notable is that when it was announced, it was clearly just text-based. This was not multimodal. The three types of prompts that they talk about in this blog are text prompts, which they say provide a flexible and freeform experience that allows you to express yourself creatively through prompts, data prompts, which they say are the go-to choice when you have examples to help you specify precisely what you want from the model, these being good for applications that require consistent input and output, such as data generation and translation, and finally, chat prompts for building conversational experiences. So one part of the thrust of Bedros' piece is that multimodal Gemini is coming to this Makersuite platform. Some of the leaked screenshots seem to show how the new Gemini-powered Makersuite model can handle things like text recognition, object recognition, captioning, understanding image inputs, and more. They show a screenshot of run settings that allows the user to select between a text or multimodal model, as well as a checkbox to be able to include images as an output type. One of the contentions that the author makes is that Gemini is not just an addition to BARD, but is its own entirely separate model. Another screenshot appears to show an integration with Google Drive, from which users can grab images. Another screenshot shows their user testing their prompt with images. And what's more, remember we talked about how there were text prompts, data prompts, and chat prompts in the first version of Maker Suite. Another screenshot appears to show that data prompts also support multimodality. A reminder menu in the screenshot says add images to your prompt. Try tasks like captioning and image understanding. And finally, the author shows a snippet of the code, which clearly has the identification Gemini in it. Now, while the author assumed that the Gemini leak here would overshadow the other part, let's talk a little bit about this idea of stubs. Stubs are basically a feature by which users can create generative AI apps that live directly in a site. The author describes it as akin to AI-generated Figma prototypes. Note, apparently these stubs do not generate full code. It really is just the Figma-style prototype. However, one interesting feature is that you can see a public view of other people's stubs that have been made public and can even save and remix them. This is through a community gallery feature. Now, the excitement here is, of course, that this could unlock a lot of creativity. It could radically increase the speed with which people are able to prototype new ideas and just generally contributes to the momentum of how AI is unlocking not just developer creativity, but the ability of a wider array of people to build new ideas and applications. Now, the reason that I think that this matters is that it harkens to one of the most important battles in the AI arms race, which is the battle for the affinity and affiliation of AI developers. This has been a key focus all year. Probably my most referenced article of the entire history of this podcast is that internal Google memo that was leaked in May called We Have No Moat and Neither Does OpenAI. The thrust of that was, of course, that the rise of open source AI developers, particularly in the Meta Llama ecosystem, had totally changed the nature of competition. It wasn't just a Google versus OpenAI battle anymore but a Google versus OpenAI versus a legion of indie hackers who are actually making some surprising and serious progress. 
The author of that memo said, The uncomfortable truth is we aren't positioned to win this arms race and neither is OpenAI. While we've been squabbling, a third faction has been quietly eating our lunch. I'm talking, of course, about open source. Plainly put, they are lapping us. Things we consider major open problems are solved and in people's hands today. Now, of course, Meta's momentum in that space started in some ways when their full Llama model was leaked, but was really extended when they announced Llama 2, which came officially with a commercial option. Since then, you've seen the big AI labs spend even more time on developer courting. In addition to the Google tools that we just talked about, the ones that have been publicly announced in terms of Makersuite, as well as the ones that seem like they're coming, with Stubbs and this Gemini integration, OpenAI is also trying to clearly win and or retain the affiliation of developers with their OpenAI Dev Day, which is coming up on November 6th. Now, when they announced Dev Day, Sam Altman went to pains to make sure that people didn't think that we were going to get GPT 4.5 or GPT 5, but that people would still be really excited. Subsequent to the announcement, speculation has fallen in a few key areas. One has to do with lower cost options. One of the biggest barriers for people building in the OpenAI ecosystem is the incredibly high cost of API access, especially relative to some of the open source options that are out there. A second area of speculation is around a fundamentally new tool set specifically for AI agents, which of course has had a ton of developer energy and attention throughout the year. We are just a couple weeks away from that event, so I expect to see a lot more leaks of information about what might be coming in not too long. Now zooming farther out, there's also been a lot of chatter recently about Apple's plans around generative AI, and while we don't have anything conclusively, it does sound like part of the effort is around developer recruitment as well. From a Bloomberg article, Apple's software engineering teams are also looking at integrating generative AI into development tools like Xcode, a move that could help app developers write new applications more quickly. That would bring it in line with services like Microsoft's GitHub Copilot, which offers autocomplete suggestions to developers while they write code. Now, of course, it's not just the big guys that are going after developers, but also other more independent players who are trying to reimagine the developer experience for the AI age. Replit recently announced the expansion of its open source AI developer tools to all of its users. Over the course of the last year, they have been rolling out generative AI tools, including the Ghostwriter AI code completion tool, but up until two weeks ago, that had been limited to a testing group of users. As of October 9th, however, Replit integrated Ghostwriter into their core platform and made that tool available to all of its users the effort they called AI for All. At the same announcement, they also shared a new version of its custom-built LLM focused on coding. Now, interestingly, that Replit announcement happened at the AI Engineer Summit in San Francisco a couple of weeks ago. This was an event brought to you by the folks over at the Latent Space podcast and was just a huge success with a ton of energy and excitement around it. So much so that they actually announced another event, the AI Engineer World's Fair, next year. The point of all this is that one of the big vectors of competition in any new technology space, but especially in artificial intelligence, is going to be what ecosystems developers build in and what tools and models they build on top of. This is hugely important to the long-term trajectories of the companies that are competing in this space, and so it's not surprising to see so much effort being put into cultivating relationships with developers across all of these companies. These Google Maker Suite leaks certainly suggest that it's a priority for Google to keep innovating in this area, and so of course it is something that we will keep an eye on. Like I said, take it with a grain of salt that all of this is leaked information, which A, could be wrong, and B, could be subject to change, but still an interesting little insight into where the space is. That, however, is going to do it for today's AI Breakdown. I appreciate you listening or watching as always. Until next time, peace.